Okay, I'd like to introduce you to Alan Lewis from Medistem. Yeah, thank you, and uh, thanks for staying later on to hear the presentations. Well, we don't, we're not talking about soybeans, uh, and we are fiscally responsible too. But um, let's see, I use this, I guess. We are quasi-public companies, is a safe harbor statement. Um, <clears throat> The, the focus of the company, um, we are a, st a clinical stage virtual company, there's only a few employees, and we have a singular focus right now at, on a, a population of stem cells called endometrial regenerative cells, which I'm going to share the rest of the presentation about. These, I'll call them ERCs for simplicity, and they are derived from the endometrium, which is the lining of the uterus, I'm sure you're all aware, and that we call them nature's regenerative powerhouse, because Women go through about 500 cycles in their lifetime here, and these, these, these uh, cells can keep regenerating. And the cells in particular, <coughs> the ones that I'm talking about, the ERCs, are very specialized in making blood vessels. They're very angiogenic. They're also pluripotent, so they can actually have broad applicability. You can see they, they actually can differentiate in a variety of different cells in the body. But it's their angiogenic activity that I'm going to focus on uh, this afternoon. <coughs> because um, they're uh, from the, the category of stem cells, which are called mesenchymal stem cells, they have a universal application. They're allogeneic, and uh, they are safe, and I'll again share more about that. We do have FDA um, approval for, for our manufacturing as well as clinical trials, and it's a very efficient way of generating cells using this particular cell population. One donor can generate as many as 20,000 different doses of, of cells. And, because uh, they're pretty they're sturdy cells, they're frozen, they can be sent to across the country, around the world, uh, as a point of care product, like a pharmaceutical model, if you will. The initial indications that we're going after are a very large, uh, both cardiovascular indications, CLI, critical limb ischemia, as well as congestive heart failure. And um, we also have additional possibilities, which I'll share with you. Very important for little companies is IP, as you all know, and uh, we have a very extensive intellectual pro portfolio, which again, I'll mention a little bit later. So these cells were discovered by Tom Ickham uh, in 2007, uh, shown to be uh, very novel cells, pluripotent, and uh, of course they were obtained from the endometrium. And you can see from the cartoon that they are truly pluripotent, they, they move into most cell types in the body. These cells were independently verified by a number of other labs around the, the world, actually. Uh, and um, so I think we know that these cells are in existence. You also notice that the publication date for these publications are 2008. So we do have the dominant IP in this space. So uh, this, this, this slide shows you that the endometrium on the uterus uh, regenerates itself every month. And uh, it's really a very, very vascular tissue in the body. And it's the ERCs that are these specialized cells that are critical to produce blood vessels within that tissue. And um, <clears throat> so the term regenerative powerhouse, it is one of the very few organs in the body which has that kind of, of recycling. So the question, of course, is, well, well why, do they, why do they cause angiogenesis? And this simple slide just conveys how we believe it does this. When you inject these ERCs into ischemic tissue, whether that be limbs, heart, or other, other organs, it turns on the protein HIF-1-alpha, uh, HIF-1, uh, which is a, an important uh, hypoxia-induced factor. This, this protein then actually activates growth factors, angiogenic factors in particular, as well as matrix of metalloproteinases in the ERC. And between those two proteins, you actually will then generate blood vessel formation. So this is a, this is a uh, unique way of, of, of generating uh, blood vessels. Now we know that the ERCs are, uh, I use the word unique carefully here, but this work was done at the NIH and we, they wanted to compare gene expression profiles of bone marrow mesenchymal cells, which is perhaps the gold standard in this space, with our ERCs. And you will notice on this slide that we have a, a multi multifold uh, upregulation of genes on the slide uh, from 39-fold for aldehyde deaerogenase to, you know, going right down to uh, smaller fold increases. But the thing I wanted to point out is that the, in light blue on the slide are those proteins, those genes, which are linked 
to angiogenesis and uh, clearly blood vessel formation. Some of the other genes on the slide are linked to what I'd call the anti-inflammatory profile of MSCs, and clearly there are a number of MSCs that are in development for that for the purpose of, of suppressing autoimmune diseases. So, okay, so the genes are regulated, so what happens in vitro in a cell tissue? Well, this is a slide which just shows you that these ERCs will simulate blood vessel cell growth in vitro. Here we're measuring endothelial proliferation and different concentrations of ERC supernatant. And then in the bottom of the slide, we've also shown quite convincingly that ERCs actually simulate angiogenesis in, in uh, these are in mice. What you do is you, you actually clamp off the femoral artery and on the left hand, as you look at it, you see what happens over a number of weeks, uh, you lose the limb. Uh, if, if you do the same procedure with uh, the mice on the right and give them these ERCs, you can see the limb is, is retained. So quite a, quite a uh, obviously a little gory slide, but it shows you that these cells do, do have very significant act in vivo activities. Also, this is a model of um, uh, heart failure and, and similar process here. We clamp off uh, uh, blood vessels, LAD, and you'll notice after 14, day, after 14 days of the clamping, you then administer the cells, or, or uh, and the cells could be bone marrow in this case, or ERCs as well as controls, and uh, measure what happens 14 days later. Now you get significant fibrosis, which is the dark coloration on the slide, and you will notice in the, in the histogram that the ERC is much more effective at reducing fibrosis of the heart. And if, on the, the second uh, figure on the slide, you'll also note that the left ventricular fractional shortening is increased after the administration of ERCs, but not the uh, bone marrow uh, cells. Again, showing that the cells do function and they reduce scar tissue as well as increase tissue repair. Obviously, moving, moving right along the process, we wanted to make sure that these cells were safe uh, in order to go into the clinic, and uh, we've shown that they indeed do not uh, demonstrate any either acute or chronic toxicity in, a in animals at doses exceeding 100-fold what you'd expect to dose humans, and this is over a period up to 12 months. The FDA has accepted this uh, clinical package, and uh, they're allowing us to move ahead with our clinical trials. The other thing, of course, I'm sure many of you will realize that angiogenesis has been linked to tumor formation, and uh, clearly we needed to check that out, whether in fact these cells would uh, enhance tumor formation. So we used a, an interesting model of glioma in, in mice, and uh, that the, uh, the pink on, on the figure shows the, the brains of mice, and in blue you can see the actual tumor itself. And at the top you see the controls, and then if you go down, you'll see that, that the ERC is administered in, intravenously, as well as given directly into the tumor site. And you'll note that the actual cells reduce the tumor formation in these animals. Now, we've obviously looked at uh, a number of patients to date and uh, not looking for tumors directly, but I think it's a good sign that we're not going to see anything. And I think the other thing is I wanted to point out that um, even though they're angiogenic, these cells really are angiogenic in ischemic situations. So what is it, the diseases that we're going after? CLI, I'm sure people have been talking about this all day. Um, this is one of the favorite diseases for those people working with MSCs. You know, clearly there's a, there's a uh, occlusion of the circulation in extremities, uh, result of atherosclerosis, often linked to diabetes, with very significant outcomes, and you can read the numbers for yourself, but uh, clearly there's a huge number of leg amputations, um, and the only treatment right now is not terribly, well, it's effective, but uh, involves sur surgery, of course. And uh, you can imagine that with reimbursement at the level that we're talking about, which is an estimate to date, this is a very significant market opportunity for the company. And again, there are no effective therapies being developed, or, well, I guess other companies would argue that they have the good compounds moving forward, or uh, cells moving forward, but we believe ours are specifically interested because of their angiogenic potential. Currently, uh, we've got an FDA-approved phase one, two trial, uh, which will be initiated in the first quarter of next year uh, with 15 patients which are really uh, are not eligible for surgical uh, revascularization. Um, the, the PI is Mike Murphy, who some of you might know at Indiana University. He's, uh, he's the very first person to have done a bone marrow stem cell trial in CLI in the United States. We also have a very small trial ongoing in China. Uh, for a CLI study with a, with a small group there. 
It's commenced earlier this year, and uh, we've only done two patients to date. No issues, uh, but obviously there's no data either at the moment. So this is a sort of a global approach. It will give us some information which could be very useful. Moving on to the CHF studies, um, again, a very large opportunity, marketing opportunity. Uh, I won't walk you through the numbers here. Significant mortality rate. The, the fact of it is, um, again, there isn't really much ongoing, going on which is going to really change this. And uh, we've, we've, we are, we've already initiated a phase one, two trial uh, earlier this year, which we, uh, we will complete in 2014. These are 60 patients. Uh, that these patients are ineligible for cabbage and angioplasty, as you can see. Um, and uh, we use a procedure whereby the cells, the ERCs, are administered in a, a, a procedure which uh, involves uh, retrograde infusion of cells into the venous sinus, shown in blue on the slide, uh, with the help of a balloon catheter, which creates a black pressure. So the cells are allowed to to go into the tissue at that point. It's a 30 minute procedure. And there are a number of companies that have much more convoluted and more difficult procedures in, in place at the moment. We've done 13 patients to date. Again, it's a double blind trial, so I can't share data with you. We do know that the DSMB is approved continuation of the study after the first five patients. So we haven't seen any real issues from a safety perspective at this point. Again, we're working with uh, the Leo B B Carrier is the chairman of the Bakulev Center. That's in Moscow, a big cardiovascular center there. Amit Patel is our international PI, obviously based in Utah. So um, just give you a little snapshot of, of the, uh, the, the products that we have. Or the, it's the same product, of course, but uh, the potential of the ERCs. You can see that the, the congestive heart failure and critical limb ischemia moving forward. I'm not going to say, I have not mentioned other indications today, but again, I, at that one slide I shared with you, these cells are, are like other MSCs. They can be used in autoimmune diseases. Um, we've got some animal data in this area, but we're not going to be talking about that. In MS, uh, Duchenne's, which of course is an orphan disease, and an area which I'm particularly interested in is type 1 diabetes. <clears throat> this is an autoimmune disease. I'm sure most of you are aware that has been a challenge to... Uh, to cure, but uh, you know, my old company, Viasite, is doing well with an embryonic program. Few people have tried MSCs to see if they can suppress the immune system of these patients. So I'm not terribly effectively to date, but I think our cells are, are slightly different. And uh, we're working with Yale University, Hugh Taylor and his group, Bob Sherman, to come up with a program which we think will be a very important one in this space. So overall, the, the opportunity for all of these types of indications is enormous. I'm not telling you what you probably have heard of multiple times today, but our current approach is on the, on the two programs which I mentioned at the beginning. The, the IP, um, Tom, uh, Tom Ikim is a true uh, uh, entrepreneur, innovator, and a, an outstanding person at creative ideas, which he's converted into intellectual property for the company. And, we cover everything from the products, whether they sell differentiated or undifferentiated, factors that are produced, there are gene delivery vehicles that can be involved, uh, the, pro the properties of these cells, uh, as well as the indications that we're going after. So we really have a very, uh, we believe, a dominant intellectual property space, and I, I do realize the importance of that. I was at Celgene for a while, and I realized that placental cells are owned by Celgene. We believe we own these cells. And that's really critical as we look ahead. The milestones that we have ahead, I'm not going to walk you through them all, uh, just to give you a sense that we have a lot of um, news flow in the next year or so. And clearly, w when you start moving out into 2015, well, we hopefully will have some significant data from the trials that I've briefly mentioned. So in summary, um, I want you to go away thinking that uh, we have a very exceptional cell source, uh, these endometrial regenerative cells. Um, it's a platform which allows us to look at a variety of different indications, all of which are significant markets. They are particularly angiogenic. Um, they are like the other MSCs. Uh, you can be used uh, universally as an allogeneic product. And because they can be shipped well, they have, they have, they have quite uh, tenacious cells. Um, I think we are very optimistic that they will work. And obviously, while we talked about uh, this, this rather term that we coined nature's regenerative powerhouse, I hope that you believe that they certainly have that potential. 
The two diseases we've talked about are very significant unmet medical needs as well as very, well, very large market opportunities. And while we haven't talked much about it, we're, we're a small group, as, as Joe was talking about his own group. Uh, we're, we're pretty efficient at what we do. We do our manufacturing in Indiana uh, with Cook. Uh, we do clinical studies around the world. Um, and clearly, we believe we can develop these cells a little more cheaply, perhaps, with help from Russia and China. But our real focus is to make sure that we, these studies are done in the US, uh, uh, because ultimately, that's what people are going to look to for the clinical data. Uh, the management team, while small, is experienced, and uh, we have an interesting board, which are which, uh, very supportive of the company. So with that, I'll thank you for your attention, and uh, I, go, I know there's one poor soul left, and I, Chris is next, I think, and uh, don't forget we're having a drink afterwards, Chris, so don't take it too long of it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>